Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you for tuning in today. All right, so we got a mixture of some good and or bad. It's definitely bad news for Christian Dvorak as he will miss the remainder of the season for the Montreal Canadiens with a or torn pectoral muscle. Surgery is scheduled for tomorrow for Christian Dvorak and the center depth for the Montreal Canadiens just got a lot more challenging the rest of the way. Like I mentioned, we're only at 37 games played. I mentioned this in the last pregame video. 37 games played, five games away from the halfway point of the season for the Montreal Canadiens. And they are down two notable centers, obviously with Kirby Dock and even Alex Newhook also, who can play center and wing. Now we just can't wait for Alex Newhook to come back, although it's still going to be a while for him most likely. But now we saw Kent Hughes at practice this morning on his phone. So you got to think he's calling the Laval Rocket and... Somebody else is going to have to be called up here, and is it going to be finally time for Leas Anderson to get a look? He's a centerman with the Laval Rocket, and we know that we saw Emil Heineman come up, but still didn't look quite as ready, whereas Leas Anderson actually has more NHL experience. So he's got, at, at current, uh, currently has 110 games played in the NHL, 7 goals, 10 assists, 17 points in those 110 games, and... Um, 57 men penalty minutes to go with it. So Anderson has played with the New York Rangers. He's also played with the Los Angeles Kings. So that's where his NHL experience comes from. And then also with the LA Reign last year. Where the biggest concern is, I think, with Anderson's game in terms of just, you know, looking at the numbers on Hockey DB would be his plus minus. So he is a minus six right now with the Val Rocket in just 13 games. And then in 67 games last year with the Ontario Reign in the AHL, a minus 17. And if you even go further back with the New York Rangers, he was a minus 13 in 42 games played in 2018-19. And then with the Hartford Wolfpack, Wolfpack in the AHL, he was a uh, minus 24 at one point just before that stint with the Rangers. So... You have to think that maybe is he d defensively responsible enough to jump up and play with the Canadians right now where the team is playing pretty solid team defense as we speak. So you don't really want to mess that up. And hopefully, you know, he can come in and really quickly grasp Marty St. Louis concepts. That's if he even gets called up. So let's just not pretend like they might just re recall Emil Heineman again. Is Joshua Waugh going to get called up? I don't know that he would necessarily at this stage. I would like to think that they want to put somebody in a more serviceable position to succeed and to really fill a need, which is at center right now for the Montreal Canadiens. So I think uh, if he's healthy enough also, because I believe Anderson also is coming off injury not that long ago. He's only got 13 games played this season, so that speaks to it. And uh, with the Laval Rocket, seven goals, two assists in those 13 games this season. So offensively not having bad numbers. So what's he going to be like defensively if he gets called up? So we'll see if he does end up getting called up. But great news today. Thank goodness is that Josh Anderson is healthy and good to go. He's going to play tonight. <laughs> He's going to play tonight against the Buffalo Sabres. He uh, explained in practice today how he felt like he might have torn a ligament in his knee after the Dallas game the other night, but it turns out after the feeling came back in his knee that he actually was completely fine. And he was at morning skate this morning before the game and he's looking ready to go against the Sabres. In fact, uh, that's what that's what they've said is that he is good to go. So that's really encouraging because if Josh and Christian Dvorak went down, it was like, okay, I don't want to embrace tanking, but it's like it might have been inevitable at that point. So you guys have heard me talk in the last year, I Slavkovsky video, me saying how, you know, I don't I don't want to encourage tanking anymore. I want to let the Canadians go through the rebuild naturally. They have naturally lost. They were last place two years ago. They were fifth last last year, and now you know they find themselves still in the basement of the league, if you will, but they're 500, right? And Cole Caulfield kind of doubled down on his quote the other day. So let's talk about that quote from practice really quick. I think we should just do like a quotes from practice segment for these pregames because you get a little bit of content out of it at least. So Cole Caulfield on Montreal's position in the standings, we're still in it and we're still going to fight for it. So that just means, you know, they're still going to try to fight to stay in the playoff race, right? And that just is going to, you know, improve the team's morale. And not just the morale, it's going to improve their confidence, for one thing, playing without all these players, without Doc, without Newhook, without Dvorak going forward here, without Harvey Pinard. And um, I always seem to miss one, so I'm just going to go back down. I always do this. It's happened two, two pregames in a row. Uh, Tanner Pearson as well. We can't forget him. So he's a serviceable, serviceable player for the Canadians, and certainly they could use him in the lineup right now. Were his numbers outstanding? Not necessarily, but 
this is the point is that, you know, Montreal's got these five injuries to these players and they are still, they are still in it on January 4th, almost at the halfway point of the season. So can they continue to play the strong team def- defense and strong team concepts that seem to really be sinking in more? Because I, like I mentioned last post game, I mean, the puck pursuit has been excellent from these guys. Every single shift, every single player seems to be playing with energy. Nobody's taking a shift off. And I genuinely mean that. So they need to do this at home. I feel like the Canadians struggle more at home. The statistics would show you that as well. If we really want to pull up the records, I'm not going to do that right now. But their home record seems to be the more challenging one for whatever reason. These guys just play well on the road together. The team bonding is there, all that good stuff. But they need to play better at home. And that's what I'm hoping to see from this lineup tonight. From the Sabres side of things uh, tonight, we do have Kyle Pozo listed on the injured list. That, that's that's definitely a minus. He's a good player He's out for the Buffalo Sabres, as is uh, Gergensen's. So we'll see if Devin Levi gets the start in net tonight for the Buffalo Sabres. A, a lot of Habs fans were clamoring to to get Devin Levi, the Montreal, the Quebec native. So I know he'd be pumped. He's going to be pumped to play tonight should he get the start over Pekka Lukanen. So I expect that Devin Levi should get the start tonight. And then in net for tonight for the Canadians, I'm not certain if Jake Allen... Or I know Samuel Montebo will be getting a night off most likely. I'm not sure if it's Allen or Caden, Caden Primo confirmed. I just I didn't see that, but I I would like to think it's Jake Allen tonight. But I could be wrong. It would be nice to see Primo. Primo played great in Buffalo, so it could be him for all for all I know at the recording of this video. So we'll know by the time you guys comment down below. But uh, you know, what was I going to go with there? Um, we'll we'll see what happens in the terms of the goaltending goaltending situation. We heard that the Maple Leafs have made offers for Jake Allen and it was embarrassing and the Habs didn't even entertain it. Apparently there's a bunch of teams looking to get the services of Jake Allen, but the price is a little bit high right now for Jake Allen. Higher than a sixth round pick, Toronto. Are you serious? Are you are you serious? Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. That's another video for another day. But the Buffalo Sabres are uh, going to be coming in with their top line of Jake, or sorry, Alex Tuck, uh, Tage Thompson, Jeff Skinner, who always plays good against the, against the Canadians. Skinner! Jeff Skinner, we need to get on that guy because he just scores way too much, way too much against the Montreal Canadiens. Dylan Cousins, Jack Quinn, JJ Paterka, the nice youth line for the Sabres. Uh, that's gonna, that's always a fun line to watch, I think, just because those guys have so much potential still. Still can't believe they took Jack Quinn over Marco Rossi, though. My goodness, I don't know if Sabres fans will ever, I don't know, if forgiveness is the right word, but there, but they could have taken. They could have taken Marco Rossi, who's a much more talented player than Jack Quinn. But we'll see what Jack Quinn becomes. Casey Middlestad on the third line with Jordan Greenway and Zach Benson, someone that we were talking about pre-draft. Zach Benson's going to make his Bell Center debut tonight with the Buffalo Sabres. That'll be fun to watch also. And Peyton Krebs, Gergensen's is uh, injured, like I mentioned. And then Eric Robinson on pair on the defense pair. On the defense pair for the Sabres, Rasmus Dahlin, Henry... Henri Yokihiru, Yokihiru, that's one of the coolest names ever. I know I'm still not pronouncing it perfectly, but Owen Power and Eric Johnson on the second defense pair, and then Matias Samuelson, Connor Clifton on the third pair for the Buffalo Sabres. Was it Eric Johnson that got into a fight with Slavkovsky in Buffalo? Might have been him or Connor Clifton. I think it was Connor Clifton, actually. So we'll see if any... Uh, any of those sort of sparks fly tonight, right? Against uh, against the Canadians. So I'll end I'll end on this, and that is a Slavkovsky quote. Okay, so we're gonna ask, we're gonna hear from Slavkovsky on his confidence lately with the Montreal Canadiens. He says, "quote Obviously, playing with two great players helps a lot. I don't really know. It's just there. I knew I could play hockey this whole time. It was just trying to find my game better and better, and it's fu- trying to find my game better and better and better, and it's finally coming together. So Slavkovsky knows where he's at." He notices his progress. His confidence is naturally going up playing with Nick and Cole and like none of them look out of place. I mean, the fact that they're playing on the top line right now together still and producing and doing well is amazing. So we'll see what happens. We'll see who the Canadians call up. We'll see how they manage without Christian Dvorak going forward. And we'll hopefully have a healthy squad the rest of the way and just have the Canadians continue to compl- continue to play competitive hockey as long as possible this season. That was and is still the goal. So progress. We're not going to get a top 10 draft pick, guys. Let's just settle on it. It's not going to happen. Let's just make progress in general, period, for the rebuild and get this team back to the playoffs as soon as possible here, okay? All right. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon. Go Habs, go. Ciao.